Picture. Um, I mean, I didn't know whether to wear a combat suit or an actual suit today, um, given the headlines. And I've been called many things in this industry. Um, I came down the escalator about 10 o'clock and someone said, here comes the grenade. Like, I have never been called a grenade before. Bit tubby, but I'm not a grenade. Um, why Australia needs an alternate currency? Um, I want to start with a thank you. Don't worry, I haven't got my presentation slides mixed up. Over the last um, five months, we've been on a journey with this industry, with many people um, in this room, talking about alternate currency, looking at global practices, and looking to implement elements of them here um, to start a different conversation. And it's been five months of customer first. There's been heaps of, a couple of rocks thrown saying it wasn't customer first, it's not in the interest of the industry. In those five months, we've taken this industry advertisers and agencies on a journey. Now, where has that got us to? It's got us to, today, over $75 million worth of our inventory on sports is now going to be guaranteed against Kantar in 2024. Over $75 million worth across every single holding group, including a number of the independent groups. I, I'm not sure whether Australia needs or has an alternate currency. That tells me this industry wants to move forward and the need was there. We brought something different to the industry. 75 million bucks worth, that's the start, in five months. You don't do that without being customer first, period. Um, why do I think it's so important? I think we've just got to let data be data. Let the data do the talking. Let the data provide the insights on what's deeper, what's richer for our industry. Multi-metrics, they're not new. Um, I think Lucy and a number of the panels spoke about it earlier. You guys deal with multiple currencies all day long, multiple data sets. You're bringing them into your platforms. You're the experts at it. It's not new. We don't want to leave any value on the table for you, our partners, um, our agencies, and our advertisers. We've got a premium product, we've got a premium ad experience that we want to sell to you, and we want you to buy it, period. There's more value to come from this moving forward. And it's much bigger than advertising. This conversation about alternative currency is way beyond the deal between buyer and seller, way beyond the ideal of buyer and seller. Eyes on the horizon, what does it look like moving forward? Um, what we're doing with the set-top box data gives us the opportunity in the future to match that with attention data, to match that with return on investment data, like the Agile guys were just talking. Um, there's a company in the US called Data Fuel X. I'm not sure if any of you are aware of it. They've built a platform that plugs into all the agency groups. You can pick which currency you trade. Nielsen One, VideoAmp, iSpot, Comscore. You get to pick. You get to pick the one that's got the most depth for your client. That's not something that's coming, it exists. It already exists in the US. I'm not saying that's gonna happen here. I don't think the Australian marketplace has got the scale for four currencies, but it's certainly got the scale for alternative currencies. Um, I mean, this will disappoint many journalists in the room. Like, this is not about Oztam versus Kantar, period. It's just not. I mean, I know Justin's been billing up that for the last month and he's filled the room, so job done. Um, but it's not, it's not about, it's, this is about bringing global best practice to this market. And we spent time learning what's being done overseas, and we think there's an opportunity for everyone to share in that value. Um, I've mentioned the 75 million, that's like, so over 20% of our revenue is now traded against an alternate currency. We can work with multiple currencies. You guys, as a room and as an industry, um, have just proved that. It's not about us and them, it's just not. That's not the conversation at all. Um, I've mentioned multiple metrics are not new. Um, some of these are currencies, um, and the reality is you guys as agency deal with them all the time. Um, there's a conversation I think Mark mentioned from Free World earlier on about people making up their own rules, marking their own homework. We're not marking our own homework. Um, we've given a million set-top box, all of that data to Kantar a global independent research company to do it for us. Ironically, they underpin the entire TV measurement system in the UK and in China and in other markets. I'd love to think we're the first in the world doing it. We're not, it's been done before. It's happening elsewhere in the world. 
Let's get on with it together. And I think you guys already have. This is what it looks like today for um, the Foxtel platform. Over 38%, let's call it, let's round up, let's call it 40%. 40% 40 of our entire platform, channels across the top, day parts down the side, registers are zero. Like, I like donuts, I just can't sell them. And you can't buy them, period. Like, that's what we're working with. That's gone up 10% in the last 12 months. I think, as an industry, technology-wise, we should be getting better at this, which is why we've gone. We can't leave our own data. We can't leave our own set-top box data idling any longer. It's got a massive role to play for the value in this industry. Tomorrow, every spot is counted and the audience attributed to all of those channels. Um, there's audiences watching every day part on every channel. Over a million set-top boxes reaching just under two and a half million people. It's common sense. There's people watching every channel all the time. You'll notice there, there's a few gold squares. Um, there's a few incredible golden nuggets that we found on this journey, which again is a value equation for you as an industry. Um, this is probably the ugliest slide you will see today. But I wanted to show you that it wasn't just about visualization, it's real. Here's the showcase channel. Up there is all the red blocks that are zeros. What do they look like tomorrow? They're green. They've all got numbers in them. They're not massive, but as I said before, I can't sell you a zero and you can't buy it, but you can buy that. There's value there for all your advertisers. There's some more green up there that are minuses. Some of the numbers are smaller than Kantar. So it's fair game. Like We are delivering something transparent from a world-leading research company. We're not making shit up. We're not marking our own homework. Beyond advertising, um, this is where I think it gets really powerful for alternative currencies. There's been a lot of discussion across the industry about women's sport, um, the success of it, the growth of it, probably the lack of corporate support within it. Um, looking at where we were today, and where we could be tomorrow, AFLW up 24%. NRLW up 52%. Women's sport, generally, its biggest challenge is competing, lobbying government for funding. Lobby local communities, local council, and then finally us lot, lobbying corporate Australia to spend more, be a partner on their brands. We just improved their story by 50%. Their pitch to government is 50% better than it was yesterday. That's, that's way more than just a deal for advertisers. That's why alternate currency is so important. It's beyond just advertising, way beyond advertising. Let's look at our magazine shows. Um, NRL 360, as an example, up 49%. AFL Tonight, up 153%. You guys know the Foxtel business. You know the KO business. We invest millions in magazine shows to differentiate our broadcast, to give the fanatics, the real sports fans, more depth, more insight every day of the week across all the codes. It costs a bloody fortune. Like, and we'll take this data back to Steve Crawley, the head of Fox Sports Production. He's got his editors there. He's got his producers there. He's got his talent there. Like, suddenly, these shows. They've become more valuable. Like, this is coming from our own real set-top box data. We may make decisions on some of these shows not to produce them next year. We might actually make decisions to produce more of them, because clearly the audiences are engaged with them. And for us, as a business, we're talking about the future of TV advertising today. We don't interrupt live sport. We build the integration for you, our partners, and our brands through these magazine shows. So already your value equation has got better too. And on the journey that we've been on for the last five months, chatting to advertisers, I was in Melbourne last week and we spoke to probably 10 or 11 big blue chip brands about where we're going that are all on board as sport partners for 2024. Do you know what? Half of them already knew. Um, their data's that good. They know what works. They know how hard our sports platform is working. We're now bringing them the real depth of that audience so they can understand it more. And there's greater value opportunities for them across not just these magazine shows, but maybe new ones in the future. Our local productions. Um, for all of us in the industry, we've all got 
um, quotas to hit uh, when it comes to local content. And again, as a platform, you live and die by the local content. It's an opportunity for integration. It's an opportunity to connect with Australian and tell Australian stories. Um, just a number of shows up there. True Detective, Strife, Love It or List It, plus 48, plus 108, plus 40 percent. Oh, these, are, these are big numbers. I mean, we, we operate as an industry of plus or minus 10 percent seem to be fine. Um, the scale of these numbers and what it means to our platform and the business decisions that we'll now make could be significant, significantly different. Wendy Moore, the GM of the Lifestyle Channel, love it or list it. She may make three more series of that, or she may not. Um, the insights that we are getting from the alternate currency, as I said, is way beyond advertising and way beyond the trading relationship that we have between buyer and seller. Eyes on the horizon. Um, as I said, it's been a rapid five months, um, and you don't do it with collaboration, and you don't do do it well without working with clients. Um, what have the phases been? We've done all the internal analysis. In the space of two or three months, we gave Kantar all of the 2023 data, all of the 2022 data, which they analyzed for us, to give us findings to take to you, which we're sharing now, which we'll continue to share with you, our trusted partners. We're trading sport. Um, I mentioned the 75 plus million going up. I mean, it went that well, kind of let Marty go to Vegas and watch his favorite team. Um, it's been a good few months. Um, partner integration. We want to move quickly. We'll ensure that this data is in Media Ocean in August. We've done that within 12 months. We, we know the challenges of it, but we're working our butts off to make it as easy as possible and make sure we share that value with you moving forward. Total integration. We'll look to add in KO, Binge, um, all of our digital assets into that platform moving forward. And we'll look to do that at the end of 2024. So, let's the, it's not us and them, let the data be data, let that tell the story. Multi-metrics are not new, the ancient guys in this room, you're bloody geniuses at it. Um, hopefully I've given you a flavor. Um, we're leaving no value on the table and we're gonna pass it all back to you, agencies and advertisers moving forward. It's bigger than advertising. We'll make much bigger business decisions using that data than we ever could have before, ever could have before, and we've done it in five months. Eyes on the horizon, um, what does it look like? I think for us, the set-top box data being passed to Kantar is the cornerstone of where we could go um, as a business moving forward. Um, million set-top boxes, that's a lot of scale to match with other data sets. Um, it's nice being sandwiched between Agile. I generally think there's an opportunity for us to match that set-top box data with return on investment data. So we are right up there with business outcomes. We're there. The following presentation, um, Alex from Samsung TV Ads. There's precedents all over the world that have matched set-top box data with smart TV data. I, I'm not chatting to Alex about that um, yet, but what an opportunity. It's been done. Like, as I said, this is about us bringing best global practices to this market and changing it with you. Uh, as I said, we've been on one hell of a journey for five months. You guys, as an industry, have been on it. Um, I don't think it's about a need for an alternate currency. It's arrived, um, and you guys are playing your role in it. So thank you. I have so many questions. Um, I'm not going to get through them all, um, but let's start with you think this is beneficial for the entire industry, entire ecosystem. If you're getting better ratings than you previously discovered, I'm assuming, you know, the logic would suggest that that would be the same with the other free-to-air networks. So theoretically, could you see yourself like sharing your data with them so maybe they could have uh, the same benefits as you have? Massively. I mean, we have those we've, conversations. We've, I think there's a meeting already set. Okay. Um, so I think... The industry wants to lean in and learn more, and if it's a value equation for, for, for all of us, then we can all win. All boats rise with the tide with deeper, richer measurement, period. So, yeah. Yes. And then, obviously, the announcement today was the video, yep. which is cancelled and stuff. You've got, you've signed up YouTube and a few others. Amazon coming on board too? Yeah, I mean, is Amazon in the room? Is Mitch or Willie around? Yeah, they're around here. Yeah, they... um, yeah we couldn't quite get our shit together to get it out. 
uh, in the press release. But yeah, they're on board. Um, yeah. They've been in meetings with us, chatting to um, our agencies and clients along the journey. Like, surprise, surprise, we haven't just made it up. We've actually gone to our clients and spoke about what they want, and they, they've supported it wholesomely. So yeah, Amazon's on board. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to read through the press release. I know it was very detailed, and I got it this morning. But yeah. is that a consistent way for all of those companies within under that umbrella to be able to, uh, for, for clients to be able to sort of plan region frequency and the rest of it. Is that, is that the sort of mandate for it? What is, what is the mandate for I, it? I wouldn't say ma mandate to reach and frequency. Like reach and frequency is hard work. So I'm not going to sit here and hope a consistent promise. data set. Yeah, consistent yeah. data set, consistent definitions. One thing that it is, it's, a, it's an open environment. Right? It's an open environment for them to kind of contribute. So um, we've had some brilliant discussion so far. There's a lot, there's a lot to do. Um, I won't lie, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in 15 yeah. or 20 years in this industry, but probably the most rewarding one, because I think if we get it right, it'll really start to give back to those clients and agencies that kind of said we should do it and kind of supported us. Yeah, well, I think it's brilliant. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's give Franny a massive round of applause. That was an excellent presentation. That was awesome, dude. Thanks, Brilliant, it's highly innovative and um, you know, he's, he's not the only business, um, as he said, rightfully, um, where they are doing this um, in other markets around the world, figuring out new ways to find these audiences and to measure them and to work, as he said towards the end of his presentation, on business outcomes. Now, he mentioned his name, where is he? There he is. Uh, we're going to look at how smart TV and ACR, there's so much technology in this market um, to, to measure to count for currency and for data purposes. And Samson here are gonna, is going to present what ACR means to the market here in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, big hand for Alex Burzum, who's the MD of Samson Ads. Alex. Thank you.